world problems, and he said this. And I think I can trust all of his judgment. He knew a two or thing about life. A thing or two about life. After all, the Bible says that he was the wisest man in all the lands, that people came from different places just to hear him speak wisdom. You must be pretty wise just speaking. People are like, oh my goodness, that guy is smart. Wow. I think I can trust him when he says not to lean unto our own understanding. Hallelujah. Solomon knew a bit of a key to life. He knew what could get us through. Because of all that wisdom that God had given him, he knew this key. He knew what could happen if we don't lean to our own understanding and we trust in God. Hallelujah. Giving all your heart to God isn't necessarily an easy task. Because it says that you have to give all of your heart, meaning you have to put all your passions toward Him. You have to put all your passions into submitting yourself to God, to letting Him teach you, to gain His understanding. It's hard enough to be passionate about some things that you enjoy because of everything that's in life. It's even harder when we have to be passionate about somebody else's desires. About what someone else wants us to do. But that's what Solomon is saying. Give all of your heart to him. Submit to him with all of your passion. Sometimes we feel uncomfortable when we're trying to do something else that somebody wants. When we're trying to submit to somebody. Maybe to my, uh, there's times that my boss will tell me, Sam, I want you to go do this, fix this, and I don't always feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. I don't know, sometimes I'm like, well, should we get one of the more experienced guys to do it? Maybe that, but I know that I have to do it, it's my job, yeah. and that I am capable. And I go on and I do it, but I don't feel comfortable right away. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the first night I try to dance, and it's probably the last time I'll try to dance. <laughs> I can jump and shout, but I can't dance formally. Yeah. But you feel uncomfortable. You're not so sure about yourself. When you're trying to do something that somebody's instructing you to do, when you're trying to submit to someone else. But if you could just open your mind for a second and see what we can have if we do right. submit to God. Right. What there is for us when we do give all our passions to God. Proverbs 3 and 8 says, It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. He's talking about when you, when you don't lean to your understanding and you keep going on pushing forward for God. It's going to be make you healthy. You're going to be nourished. You're going to find that you're not going to be as sick as much when you're trusting in Him, when you're believing in Him. You're going to find the power of yourself to rebuke sickness. That's right. There's many times that the devil tries to come against me and tries to, oh, here's a cough, here's this. But you got to rebuke that. Right. I don't believe that every single time that you start feeling sick, that guess what, now you're in a path of sickness, you're going to have to go to the doctor. Right. I don't believe that's true. Yes, I mean, yeah, sure, there's times we do get sick, but I don't think that we don't have the power to rebuke it. When you don't need to understand, you're trusting in God. Right. When you begin to feel sick, you won't give in to it right away. You can rebuke it. Amen. If we got the power to heal others as I was taught, why can't we heal ourselves? Amen. Why can't we lay oil, put oil on our head and lay our hands on our head and pray for ourselves and be healed? Right. We have the power, saints, yeah. to overcome these things. There are times, yes, that we will get sick, but we certainly don't have to be sick in, the, in like petty things all the time. But Bible says when you submit yourself to Him, you're going to be prosperous. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 10 says, and through 9, or 9 through 10, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits 
of all thine increase, so that so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. Give the Lord all you have, and you're going to prosper. You're going to find that you're going to grow spiritually and naturally. Those spiritual barns are going to burst out when you're going to be filled with too much grains and everything. He's going to provide for you abundantly when you don't withhold yourself, when you don't withhold those gifts that you have. He's going to open the floodgates for you. How many times have you heard preachers get up and say, well, when you donate the church or you pay your tithes and everything, that God's going to multiply and he's going to bless you. You've heard it all the time, right? And we begin to think, oh, well, it's just because we need money for the church. But it's not only that. It's part of our duties to God. It's how we can grow when we give. My parents always taught me to be giving, not to be stingy with what I have. And I do my best to give. And I've noticed in myself that I have increased. That my bank accounts has increased. That God's given me raises and all of that. When I'm not greedy. But when I'm withholding it to myself, man, I don't got enough money. How am I going to pay for this? Man, I can't go out doing anything with anybody. I don't got enough money. But it's the reverse. When we're free to give. Hallelujah. When you submit yourself to God, you're going to be happy. Proverbs 3 and 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that get an understanding. You're not going to be stressed out all the time when you submit yourself to God. You submit to His will with what He tries to tell you. Because you're not going to always be wrapped up in your own mind trying to figure things out. You're going to be able to lay it aside and give it to God. You're going to be happy when you submit yourself to God. How? Bible says, Proverbs 3 and 16, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. The Bible says you're going to live a long life when you submit to his understanding, when you submit to his will. I'd like to live a long life. I don't want to live until 35, and then that's it. I want to live a long life. You're going to be much, much more peaceful, the Bible says. Proverbs 3 and 17. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Amen. How many like to be peaceful? Amen. Yeah? Does it feel good to be stressed out all the time? No. You're just kind of sitting there worrying about everything. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But... If you give it to God, you're going to have peace, is what it says. Amen. How many times have you heard that? But yet we still miss a beat. We still stumble sometimes. We find ourselves worried and stressed about things. Maybe you need to submit yourself to God a little bit more. Maybe you need to give it to Him. Proverbs 3 and 20. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. By God's knowledge, he broke it up. His knowledge is powerful. He's got power in all these things. And that's the same power that we can inherit when we submit ourselves to him. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. That's something that we all strive for. We all want to be confident in what we're doing. Amen. We don't want to waver back and forth. We want to be sure of what we're doing. But when you submit yourself to God, you are going to be sure. You are going to be confident in what you're doing for Him. When we submit ourselves to Him, we're going to receive all these things. It means 
truly submitting yourself. And I'm not talking about just coming to church on Sundays. I'm not just talking about Thursdays. I'm not just talking about bringing at your bedside. I'm not talking about just these outward actions and repetitions. Those are important, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm getting at here. I'm talking about truly submitting yourself to God. But what does it mean? As we watch the different apostles, you see they were doing all these awesome things, right, through the Holy Ghost. But why? What did you notice different about them? Anybody? What, what, how did an apostle live differently than you see a lot of people nowadays? Every moment, every point of their life, and all the decisions they were making was about God. They were doing all these awesome things because they were focusing on God every day. Every move that they made, they were asking God, well, what do you want me to do? God, where do you want me to go? And through that, they were able to heal the lame and all these different people. The prophets in the Old Testament were the same way. Elijah's daily walks involved God. He didn't worry. There was a time in the Bible where right before he was going to be, Elijah was going to be lifted up in the whirlwind. And they were going to get across the Jordan River. Elijah wasn't worried about it. He used the Holy Ghost to part the water so they could walk across. Yeah. And the Bible didn't say he was all marveled by it. Oh my goodness, how did this happen? Oh. No, because he knew the power that he had in God. He wasn't worried about these things because he had the confidence. He was happy about where he was going. He had the prosperity that God had for him because he was submitting himself to God. His mind was on God continually. It's, it's, it's amazing to me. What, how, how can I show you when our minds are focused on Him. Again, it's not just about the outward lifting our hands and everything, but it's about what's inside. You see in the Old Testament, it's about the law, right? You got, you can't do this, you can't do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. Strict rules, and they're all outwardly things. But God comes, He dies for us, and He gives us grace. Okay? So now it's not just about these rules and all these guidelines. Now he's putting it in our hearts for us to make a choice for ourselves. How we're going to please him. Just like all your different personal convictions that you have. Someone might feel that this is right. The other person might think that it's not right. It might be your, per it's your personal conviction. Right? But if you feel that it's going to please God. Okay? And you decide not to do it or you decide to do it. Whichever it is, those are the things that are going to please God because now you're thinking in your heart, thinking in your mind, how can I please Him? How can I make Him happy? How can I give Him what He deserves? It's not just about, well, let me reference the book. Oh, there it says, that's all I have to do. Now it's about, now we actually have to think about how we can please Him, how we can move forward. It's about what's on the inside. Amen. If we want to have that power that Elijah does and the apostles, apostles did, we have to live like they did. We have to be in soul supplication, adoration for them. We can see all these benefits that they got by submitting to God and giving themselves to Him. But how can we submit ourselves that same way? How can we do it? Just like the opening scripture said, we are to trust Him. You can't be submitted to somebody if you're not trusting them. Not the way that God wants you to. You can be inserted but by a great ruler and be submitted to them because you're forced to. But that's not what God is looking for. You gotta understand that he knows best and that the direction he's taking is the best one. Amen. He can see what is gonna happen in the future. He can see how situations.
situations are going to end up. He knows that they're going to end for the best if you follow him. How many times does it appear in the Bible for us to have faith in the God? In God? A whole lot, right? The Bible says that you can't please him if you don't have faith. Hebrews 11, 6. So basically, if you don't trust him, you can't please him. If you're worried about giving because you don't trust that the Lord's going to provide for you, then you need to check yourself. The Bible says don't take any thought for tomorrow. Sure, don't be pulled foolish with your possessions and giving everything away. But don't be greedy either. There's two things right there. He wants us to have faith in him, to trust him that he's going to provide. And he's telling us not to be worried about what the future holds. I mean, the whole time, he's just trying to take stress from us. The whole time, like he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He's trying to take all that from us. Why do we want to keep all that on, him, on us? Why do we want to keep all of it? When he's offering nothing but options for us to be free, to be peaceful, to be happy. But all we got to do is submit ourselves to him. To get in the mindset, the kingdom mindset of him. Trust is just another form of worshiping him. It tells him that he's the best. And he will always make the right choice, choices for you. You're telling him that he's smart. I like to be told that I'm smart. I know I do. Makes me smile, okay? But so does he. We have to trust him. We have to believe him. When he gives us a direction, we ought to follow. Trust that it's going to be all right. Even if it seems off the wall. Keep going forward. We got to commit ourselves to God. We got to be committed in our daily life. We should be committed to maintaining that healthy relationship with Him. Just like how I maintain my relationship with my wife, my friends and family. We ought to be maintaining that relationship with Him. Committed to pray and fast. All of that. But again, guys, it's so much more than your outward actions. Are we understanding what I'm getting at here today? What I'm talking about, it's about how your mindset is in your daily life. As you pursue God. Because we get wrapped up in the world so much with work and our responsibilities. But if we put God first and ask what He wants first, we're going to see all of these things happening. We're going to see Him begin to move in our lives. We have to be obedient to Him. What kind of obstacles do you think we are if we're not obedient? We're not apostolic God because the apostle obeyed God, right? So we're not apostolic. But what I'm talking about is when you're praying and God gives you suggestion, or He tells you that you should go pray for another, or whatever it is, you ought to follow Him so you can grow, so you can begin to learn His voice and continue to move forward. The apostle did when He told them to start fishing from the other side of the boat. And the boat almost sank because of all the fish that wanted to jump in. If you follow him and you make the right choices, he's going to move in the way that you see in this Bible. Don't forget again that the relationship we have with God, just like he is the king, okay? Right? But he's not trying to rule like the kings you see in the 1500s and all that. He's not trying to rule with an iron fist. Because he's satisfied when we make the choices from our own hearts. When we submit ourselves and we are willing to work with him, to work for him. It doesn't satisfy him when we're forced to do something for him. Just because it's written. Hallelujah. 
Do me all stand. I just want to go ahead and pray. God has feelings just like we do. And he desires more from us. But he's not desiring more than just actions and things like that. He's desiring a want from us. A passion within us. And the Bible says sometimes that we have to stir up the gifts within us. That we've got to stir up in ourselves to move forward. You're the only one that can watch after yourself. You're the only one that can move yourself. That's why you got to make the choice to stir up that gift. That's why you got to make the choice to submit to him. To do what he's asking. you got to submit. you got to make the choice to worship him. you got to make the choice to praise him. That's what he's asking. He's asking for a passion from you. And it's your choice to stir up that passion. It's your choice to move, isn't it? Isn't it? you got to stir it up within you. And you got to submit yourself to him with all these things that he asks. Don't live your life with a book of rules. Live your life as how can I please my Savior? How can I worship him? How can I make him happy? Live your life this way. And then we're going to see the revival that we've been asking for. We're going to see the church that's still up when we submit ourselves to him. When we make our passions go forward. When we make ourselves get out of the pews and dance. When we make ourselves give him what he wants. He will be happy. You will see people come to the church. You will see people move. You will see people excited when you give yourself to him. But it's your choice. Are you going to choose it or are you going to continue to live like everything else is just going to be done for you? Like, I don't have to make a step. Like, we don't have to be unified in church. Are you going to move forward or are you going to stay still? Are you going to stir it up within yourself? Are you going to get over the hump that's set before you? Sometimes we get an obstacle on our course. And sometimes, yes, God's going to move it. But sometimes we've got to climb over the obstacle. How are we going to get stronger if we don't climb? How are we going to move forward if we don't climb the obstacle? That's the only way we're going to grow. He's asking for you to stir up the passion within yourself. Sometimes that's what we got to do. Sometimes we can't wait for God to touch us before we move. Sometimes we got to stir it up ourselves. We got to stir up the gift. Then God is going to be pleased when we make that choice. When we make our arms move. When we dance for Him. Because of our own choice. Because we want to please Him. The Bible says it everywhere that when people were dancing and worshiping Him, He was happy. Well, guess what? It makes it a fact that we ought to be dancing and worshiping to make Him happy. There's no other way that we're going to reach Him. There's no other way. And let's be following what the scripture says. We can't just keep saying that we understand it if we don't do it. We can't just keep saying, yeah, yeah, I understand, Brother Sam. I get it. No. you got to be doing it. You don't understand it unless you're doing it. This is what God is saying. you got to stir up the passion within yourself. you got to change your mind. You gotta move your mind off the topics of the world and everything that's been getting you down. You gotta move your mind and keep the place. Thinking about him, thinking about his joy and what he has to offer. Just like the old sellers, keep our mind on the price. That's what you gotta do. You gotta keep your mind on him. You gotta stir up that passion. And it's not easy, no, but you can do it. You can do it. You can do it, but you gotta make that choice. Let's lift our hands and go pray. God, you are so awesome, Lord, and we understand, Lord, what you're telling us today. We understand, God, that you're telling us that we have to submit ourselves to you, that we have to stir up the passion for you. Sometimes we get uncomfortable. Sometimes we don't know where to go, Lord, but you do. If we submit ourselves to you, we're going to move. If we submit ourselves to you, we're going to have revival. Hallelujah. God, you are awesome. Hallelujah. Touch everybody in this place right now. Hallelujah.
so that we're not growing stale. Hallelujah. We don't want to grow stale, Lord. We want to be fresh and lively for you, God. I want to be fresh and lively for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But we have to move ourselves. Hallelujah. Glory and honor be to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We worship your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. We ask God that you know. Yes, Lord. I hear you, Jesus. I hear you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We stir up God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Seek his face. Come on. Lift your hands and see his face. Tell him that you want to be stern. Tell him that you want to be serious about your walk with him. If you do need the assistance to be pushed forward, he can help you with it. But you gotta make that step first. How do you feel shut up on the heart of the CD? Hallelujah.
get out of being stuck and thinking that we always have to do it our way. We have to do it what His way is. It's part of submitting yourself to Him. Hallelujah. We love you, God. You're a great God, Lord. You're the Lord that you've spoken to us today, God. And we thank you for everything. Lord, let us let us stay. Let us no longer ponder how we can grow, Lord, but let us just move forward and we will grow. You're a great God. Hallelujah. And we worship you today. Glory to you. Well, let's give God a hand clap of praise for this house. Amen. Amen. He's good. I think one of the greatest forms of showing you love somebody is just by trusting them. I mean, when you think about it, one of the greatest ways I think to show you love somebody is to trust them. You know, I trust them. I love my wife, but I trust her with my children. I trust her with my money, our money, it's not mine, it's ours. I trust her with everything that I have. And it shows one of the greatest forms of love. Because I know if I need something, she's there. I know that if she says that we can do this, I can trust her. If she says this is going on, I can trust her. I don't have to question her. I just trust her because I love her. And man, I think if we truly love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, like the Bible says, Trusting needs to be a part of that. It's a byproduct of that love. And trusting Him with everything, with our, our mind, our finances, our who we're going to marry, where we're going to live, what kind of car we're going to buy, all of that stuff. What job, what should we take and promote, do this, that. If we just trust God, we're telling Him with every decision, I love you yeah. and I trust you. So whatever you say to do, that's what I want to do. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sam, for that word. I wanted to say something quickly before the Sunday school comes down. Um, Sister Ebright is going to be hitting a 